Welcome to the Invest Nest Real Estate Investing Show, a community for real estate investors to learn, network, and grow. Be sure to join the investnest.com and start learning and earning today. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Travis Murphy, your host of the Invest Nest Real Estate Investing Show. I'm really excited about today's show. It's, uh, we've, it's going to be our first podcast since the launch of the website, theinvestnest.com. And we have our very first invest guest officially joining us on the show, uh, Joseph Bryant. Uh, he's uh, he's a, a, an investor, him and his wife, um, and they're going to tell us a little bit about how they got into investing and uh, what they're doing currently with investing and where they're going in the future. Uh, but let's uh, let's dive right in. Uh, Joe, how you doing today? Doing mighty fine, sir. It's another fantastic day to be alive and playing the game. Thank you very much for having me on here today. And uh, again, happy birthday and congratulations on the launch of the Invest Nest here, man. It's pretty exciting. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it's been fun. It's been a fun lead up to getting, to getting everything going, but we're finally up and running. Hope everybody's enjoying it. And actually, let me take a second there. I think I got a little bit ahead of myself, but uh, real quick to all the listeners out there, uh, obviously the investnest.com is a, is a uh, social community for real estate investing enthusiasts. So if you haven't checked it out already, be sure to go check it out. You can create a, pre, a free profile and uh, make connections with other members in your area or even out of your area. And you can share your own blogs and stories about your investments. And we also have articles and blogs on real estate investing topics as well. So you can find that at theinvestnest.com. And we're on all the social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Invest Nest. All right, so Joe, first of all, before we dive into your investing, let's get a little bit of background on you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do? All right, <clears throat> well, I was uh, born and raised in a small town in Michigan. I was, uh, to put it lightly and kind of glossing over much, I was a mischievous young man. And uh, I decided, you know, I wasn't pleased with who I was, the direction I was heading in life. So by around 21, 22, I moved to Chicago where I met my first mentor and he was uh, involved in real estate, you know, in a small construction business, a small insurance firm, uh, you know, an entrepreneur. And uh, he inspired me a lot, took me under his wing, smacked me in the back of the head a lot, le lectured me a fair amount, but got me started in the game of, uh, of roof sales. And that was my first taste of entrepreneurship, of serious entrepreneurship, of making decent money. And uh, it put me in contact with a lot of real estate investors. And, I, and that's kind of what put the seed for my interest initially in the real estate. Because, yeah, you know, I was making some good money and I was enjoying, I was built, we were building a business. We went from just two guys in a garage over the span of five, six years to a multi-million dollar construction company spanning across five states. That's how I spent most of my 20s is, is building this company. And uh, so, you know, I, I was making good money, but if I wasn't working, I wasn't making. I wasn't selling, I wasn't making. Though we were building sales teams and I was getting a piece of that pie, if they quit selling, I wasn't making. And I'm seeing guys invest in real estate who are you know, making good money as well, but more passive. Whereas I was pretty heavily invested you know, physically, my mental energy with building sales teams, solving their problems. My God, you ever been on call for a sales team? <laughs> a lot of fires to be put out Dude, for real i mean it's ba basically thinking for 10 people problem solving for 15 yeah. people and yeah it's, it's a grind it's yeah, a grind for sure i mean don't get me wrong i mean my complaints are only half-hearted here because it, it helped kind of mold me into who i am now is a lot of great experience good money made great connections made but i kept seeing people in real estate making the same if not better money through you know more passive means and less less stress in their lives absolutely and uh, you know i put it off too long put it off too long just kind of focused on on other endeavors um and then finally my other half and i we started investigating you know we fancy ourselves to be a dynamic duo we've sold we've closed on roof deals together we own a, a cleaning business together um, where we service a lot of real estate investors locally new construction stuff like that very cool and, uh, very cool yeah yeah so, so so it sounds like you've definitely been bitten by the entrepreneurial bug uh <laughs> kept i'm yourself... a terrible employee <laughs> yeah <laughs> i hear that so so you had this roofing business and it sounds like you were pretty successful with it but it also sounds like it took it was a grind for you um so you had to you, you got out what you put in but I, I know this from experience myself 
uh, running an, uh, an home improvement business that, you know, when you, when you, if you can't take a day off, if you take a day off, you don't make any money and the bills don't get paid. So just like many of our listeners out there, whether they're self-employed or have a full-time job or a career, you know, you only get, you only get paid for when you show up and when you're yeah. working. Um, whereas, as you alluded to with real estate investing, passive income, you know, you, once you get your investments set up and you have your assets and your portfolio in place, the money is being made, whether or not you're there or not, you're asleep, you're awake or, or whatever it is you're doing, that money's still coming in. So I guess what was it that really caused the light bulb to go off and triggered you to go from the roofing business and wanting to get into real estate investing? Was it a person? Was it, was it just seeing other people? Tell us, tell us what it was that really pushed you in that direction. All that and then some really. Um, you know, I've had multiple mentors in my life who, you know, one of them owns like a, a mortgage business and deals with loans. And, he, you know, I've seen how well he's doing with it in the real estate game. Uh, seeing my first mentor do well with it. Um, obviously, I'm a, I consider myself to be a recreational researcher, always looking for ways to improve myself, study, learn to make money, market better, do better jujitsu, writing. You know, I just get to study, right? Right. And, uh, you know, and there's some, some recurring themes I would see when I would study successful people. Either they were primarily in real estate or supplementing their endeavors with real estate projects. But, you know, I was seeing like probably eight out of 10 successful people that I was studying or observing uh, at least had some kind of hand in the real estate game. And, uh, you know, I've kind of known that I sh should for a while kind of start moving into it. But, you know, it gets so busy with yeah. other things, don't prioritize it. So eventually kind of got to pop myself in the back of the head and be like, buddy, start making some moves. Yeah, something. <laughs> absolutely. So how long ago did you did you finally... Uh you know, say I'm, I'm going to do it and dive in about how long have you been investing so far? Well, we've been in this duplex for about six months now. You know, we got pretty excited watching videos about house hacking and the benefits of that. And that seemed like kind of a safer, easier, more accessible way to start uh, into the real estate journey there. And then we're, you know, we're eyeballing some land locally here in the rural Texas area. And then we want to, uh, you know, have a few homes, few cash flowing doors, uh, under our belt and then have some land to kind of spread out and build a few things on sure um, maybe retire on you know, have maybe have a few tenants i definitely want a shooting range there you go okay <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of good stuff right there i want to dive into the duplex in a minute but i want to take a step back and uh ask you so you you, you realize that you know you're working your 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 ass off basically and you're looking for ways to you know generate income without necessarily having to spend all your time doing it. Uh, before you bought the duplex, what, uh, what did you do leading up to that to prepare yourself? Were you, uh, were you networking with people? Were you reading books? Tell us what it is you did to prepare yourself um, before you actually pulled the trigger on the investment. And then, uh, yeah, just let's, let's start there. Okay. So yeah, obviously it begins, I mean, everybody's into the YouTube videos. YouTube videos can be a powerful resource, a great place to start. Um, we obviously hitting some books. Uh, we reached out to our financial advisor and we kind of laid out our, our long-term plans with our financial advisor. Got a little direction from him as well. Uh, he introduced us to a great real estate mortgage team, home inspectors. Um, and then, so we started looking at the credit you know, take a look at the credit scores. How can we just build the credit scores as, as maximum as possible before this comes or, you know, this occurs. Um, obviously putting away uh, a nest egg for what we anticipate the approximate down payment to be plus, you know, extra for the un unexpected yeah. uh, perch or expenses that come with, you know, especially your first time when you don't know, mm -hmm. when you think, you know, uh, and then you start getting, seeing these, you know, uh, fees you're not you never heard of in your study i'm like what the hell is an origination fee <laughs> you know? yeah. i'm like what is this yeah yeah uh, but but you know if you're getting started into it i highly recommend uh taking you know calculating approximately what you think you'll spend and then put another another at least few grand on top of that for yeah. unexpected um purchasing issues like you know i like got for me it was coming across the origination fee i'd never heard of that before it was a, a hole in my study game there um, well, that's a really good point. Like I want to, I want to, uh, you know, drive that home because 
like many people, they research real estate investing and they read and they watch videos and they listen to audio books uh, and they go to real estate meetups and they network and they do all of these things and sometimes forever and, and never actually make, you know, make an investment or make a purchase. Uh, but really, you're going to ultimately learn the most by actually doing it. Yeah. Now, so, so as much as you can study it beforehand, there's, there's so many things that you're not going to learn until you actually do it. And you're going to continue to learn, you know, the, the, throughout the life of your investing career, there's always going to be new challenges or surprises that pop up, you know, and it's how we, we react to them and learn from them to ensure that we don't repeat that mistake or uh, look out for it the second time. And in your case, you know, the next time you go to make an investment purchase, I'm sure you're going to figure in the, the origination fee. Yes. So, so about how long did you spend doing your research and leading up? And then, um, you know, when you finally pulled the trigger and did it and you were done, did you, were you relieved? Did you, in hindsight, looking back, was it something that you wish you had done sooner or do you wish you had spent more time researching? Tell us a little bit about that. I do wish I'd pulled the trigger sooner. You know, I definitely, there's no reason not to have. I was just so caught up in, in the roof sales game and I was traveling around the country and hiring sales teams and, and training them. And I, you know, I was spending more times in hotels and out of my trucks or like I'd go to one place and rent a house for six months and leave, go somewhere else. And I, you know, it was fun. It was exciting. I learned a lot, made, met a lot of awesome people, but I didn't start building my long-term wealth strategy you know, I had good cash flow, but I wasn't building a long-term foundation. And that's part of, uh, you know, getting older, having a family, start thinking longer term. Yeah. And, uh, you know, having a financial advisor who's, you know, kind of bullying me into thinking 50 years down the road a little bit, looking at projections and I start thinking about what else, you know, I can prepare for down the road. And I'm like, all right, there's just a few things I got to kick myself in the ass on yeah. and get started. So I, I, but you know, how long did we studied beforehand i would say i've been kind of passively looking into it a few years prior uh, but then after we had a you know my other half and i were consider ourselves a dynamic duo we have regular uh kind of like board meetings for just the two of us uh, for all you know like you can see a dry erase board back yeah. here behind me uh, you know something that covers a lot of our endeavors from like the freelance writing business my books the cleaning business i still have a hand in the roofing game but i'm really selective you know, like mm -hmm. kind of like large commercial projects, go for something like that. Right um, on. So we, you know, we have one of our meetings and we're just like, we need to put more effort into this real estate thing and, and, you know, get serious about it. So then I would say the pet, then the, the following year leading up to us moving out here, uh, became more serious, aggressive, uh, you know, studying harder, faster, talking about it more, uh, attacking the credit score, attacking, uh, building up you know, the nest egg that we think is appropriate for it, um, you know, uh, studying the areas, what, you know, what, what are the areas like that we're looking at, <clears throat> the average income, the average rent, <clears throat> whether or not there's a jiu-jitsu school, a big factor for us. There's no jiu-jitsu school in the area. We're not moving there. Right on, right on. And there's so much good stuff there. I, I, I want to dive into this duplex here soon, but just the fact that you and your, your wife, the dynamic duo, the fact that you guys have regular meetings, I mean, that, that, all that does is spur action, you know? Yeah. And for a lot of us out there listening, or for those out there listening, it's so easy to talk about doing things and think about doing things. And the hardest part is usually actually doing them or taking the steps you know, taking action. Um, and, you know, little things like that, meeting with your wife, or if you have other people in your network that are interested in the same types of things that you do, um, whether it's a mastermind or people at a local real estate meetup, just meeting with, meeting with them, talking with them, and, you know, all of that stuff helps you take action. So I, I love that. I love the fact that you and your wife do that. It sounds like it's uh, working wonders for you guys, but uh, I, uh, I just wanted to point that out. And then now though, I'd like you, if you could tell us a little bit about the duplex. Um, sounds like it's a house hack, but if you could just give us a little detail, a few details, just, just generally speaking, how long ago you got it, what about that investment property drew you to it and what, why it made sense for you guys to, to pull the trigger on it. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, we moved in here about six months ago. Uh, we moved in right after, uh, right after going through the uh, home buying process, which, you know, if you run the timeline, it 
tells you that we were going through the home buying process in the height of the COVID panic, <laughs> right? And that was bizarre. Yeah. It was bizarre and re- revealing. I mean, some of the people we were dealing with just stopped answering calls, didn't know yeah. what to do. I mean, you know, we got updated disclosures daily for a while there, multiple times a day sometimes. Like they're changing their disclosures, and it was a bizarre experience, but yeah. it was a, a bizarre time, you know. A lot first of un- couple weeks. A lot of un- a lot of unknown. Yeah, there was a yeah, lot of yeah. unknown going on. Those first couple of weeks, people were very uncertain. That's when, you know, like, of course, we're try- finally trying to pull the trigger, and uh, and the timing was, was challenging, but I suppose some of the best things are like that in life. Um, <clears throat> but the, the house itself, it's two doors, one on one side, one on the other. Each side is a three-bedroom, two-bath, two-story, a 30-year high-definition architectural roof, under five years old from, from what I see here. A pretty modern interior. Obviously, some work needs to be done. Uh, we've had to do a ton of work on the yard in the back, which has been fun for me. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you ever spent time in Texas here, Travis, but you got to fight bees with bricks around here, buddy. <laughs> like hornets around here will give you a lick in and take your wallet. So it's true <laughs> what they say about uh, everything being bigger in Texas, including the hornets, huh? Everything murderous, I suppose. <laughs> Everything with the capacity to kill you. Yeah, feels, yeah. it feels like that stakes, which. Yeah. <laughs> so, like that, like we just, like we said earlier, the challenges with real estate never end, including landscaping the backyard. So yep. it's, it sounds like you guys uh, self-manage then. Yeah, yeah. At this point, I wanted to for at least a year or two, maybe more, depending on the speed at which we acquire. Um, but I want to have hands on. I want to know the work. I want to know it inside and out. And of course, maximize what money we can make. Sure. Um, But down the line, I do want to move into using a management company that I can trust. I just want to make sure that I know the know the process inside and out so well, and I can smell when someone is trying to take advantage or or inflate a price or flagrantly lie about something they need that needs to be done. I'm like, no, I've done that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, that's good, and that's there's a steep learning curve there with with managing properties if you've never done it. It's Sounds like you have background with home improvement contracting, so you, you may know uh, certain things to, you know, how to deal with certain issues if they arise. But, you know, when you're managing not just the, the property, but a tenant as well, there's, there's a lot of things that come into play, um, you know, and the fact that you're doing it yourself is great. I'm sure there's lots of times where it potentially is a headache and you may not want to deal with it. But at the same time, you're learning from all of these experiences so down the road, when you have a portfolio and you decide not to manage it yourself and you hire a management company, you're going to be able to first identify a management company that you think is going to do a good job based on the things they tell you they're going to do. Uh, but then once it's up and running, if they're not, uh, if they're not delivering on that promise, you're going to be, you're going to be aware of it. You're going to know because yeah. you've, you've already done it in the past. Exactly. Um, and at the same time, it's, it's helping your, helping your margins, which I'm sure you, you know, factored in when you were analyzing your, yeah. your, your numbers and analyzing your deal. Um, and every little bit helps, you know, it's, it's, it can be a tough market right now. The, uh, the real estate market is very hot. There are deals out there. You can find them on the multiple list off market. Uh, but, you know, even if it's, even if it's not this grand endeavor that's lining your pockets, the benefits that I'm sure you guys are still realizing with whatever cash flow, if you have any, including your, your principal reduction. I mean, you're talking about having part of your mortgage being paid by somebody living next door to you. So, I mean, yeah. you know, whether it's, it's a home run or a base hit, it's, you know, it's, it's an investment. It's a start. It sounds like you guys are doing, you know, it sounds like you guys are doing an excellent job. Um, but where do you, where do you think you're going to go from here? What are the next steps now that you've gotten settled in and you've got your first investment under your belt? Are you going to take a little bit of a break or are you guys, itching to to get some more going or where where are you guys going to go right right uh and and i just realized i misspoke earlier it's actually a four bedroom two bath gotcha i just realized i misspoke three bedrooms upstairs office downstairs here um but as what we're doing next um i'm looking at land we're looking at parcels of land we would like to get a house out on on some acres and uh i you know I'd like to be able to cash flow both sides of the duplex, maybe get a one or two more uh, single family. You know, I've played with the idea of getting involved with self storage somehow. When I yeah. understand that seems like a pretty lucrative market, here. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to explore that possibility. 
Um, on the land, I'd like, I would consider putting a few homes up on there and, you know, to find people who, you know, I, I would feel comfortable living on some land with us, renting it out. And, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to make some land that we can retire on and do things we enjoy, like build a, a jujitsu training facility and have a shooting range and, right on. you know, some gardens, stuff like that. Do the of, things you love. You want to be able yeah, to do exactly. the things that you love. And it sounds like real estate is helping, helping you guys get there. So yeah. now that you guys have this additional income, this passive income, this passive revenue stream coming in with your duplex, have you found that that's freed you up a little bit more to do some of the things that you enjoy on a personal level? You, you and your wife, is this, are you already realizing some of the benefits of, of investing in real estate? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, just from, you know, the increased freedom we have here to, um, you know, being able to feel, I mean, it's exciting, you know, it's empowering to start down this path and then see further possibilities. And uh, as for taking a break now, I mean, we're pretty aggressively trying to go after everything we can. I mean, that's kind of how our family rolls, you know, yeah. like I get up by 4 30 AM most days, you know, our, my youngest daughter's up by five <laughs> and uh, we, we get doing chores and we, you know, our garage is all, we have a uh, garage is all matted out and we go out there and work out and train every morning and, and uh, we homeschool them and, you know, writing more books and doing freelance writing projects and uh, sell the occasional roof, acquiring more clients for the cleaning business, hiring for the cleaning business. All right. So you, you keep yourself busy, but I've got to ask you about the jujitsu. Tell, <laughs> tell me, are you guys, so what's, what's the deal there? What, what you and your wife, are you guys both into it? Is it a family affair? All four of us train. All four of us have trained for about seven years now. Wow. So I'm not going to, I'm going to make sure I stay on your good side because I don't know <laughs> jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> it's super fun. I highly recommend it, man. Uh, it's a topic. I mean, I try not to sound like I'm in a cult, but you know, it's like, I, I try not to like be in somebody's face, but it's so good. You got to try it. You got to Yeah, go. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's but, community. It's a community, much like real estate investing community, much like the invest nest, you know, it's, it's, it's other people that identify with you with, you know, due to similar interests. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, for me, it started with, you know, when I was traveling a lot in my 20s, I was uh, you know, trying to live a, a better path. So it's like when you're a young man in your 20s, going from state to state, city to city on your own, how do you meet people that's not at a bar and, right. and that kind of social situation? So I was like, I'm going to martial arts school. So I would travel and you know, join a Taekwondo school for a bit, join a boxing club for a bit, whatever. I uh, got to Texas the first time, joined a jiu-jitsu school, and they paired me up with a guy who was way smaller than me kind of slouching, kind of timid, quiet, right? And I'm like, oh, they're giving me an easy one because I'm new. Uh, we slap, bump, begin, and he just slammed me to the ground and <laughs> just choked me out so fast. I'm like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. Round two, uh, it's, an it's an older man in his 70s. And I'm like, okay, like now this is the way easy one they're giving me. Slap, bump, dude drops, double legs me to the ground, goes for side control, wrist locks me in seconds. I'm like, what the? Yeah. I'm like, what the hell is this place? Yeah. I'm like, you're, I'm like I, you're like, I need to learn this. Yeah. So, oh, I think, so I think the question everybody out there listening is dying to, to know the answer to is Steven Seagal versus Van Damme in the 90s, height of their career, which one wins? Van Damme. Van Damme was more of a legitimate martial artist <laughs> than Seagal has ever been. See, I, I was always a Van Damme guy, but I always heard from the jujitsu fans that Steven Seagal would win because he would just break all of Van Damme's bones. No, it's uh, as I understand it, Seagal doesn't really know jujitsu so much as Aikido, which is more of a, an art for exercise, I would say, as opposed to a combative style. Okay, gotcha. Right, well, In the martial heard... arts world, Steven Seagal's credentials are not very legit. Okay, so you, hear, <laughs> you heard it here first, everyone, just in case you were wondering. Van Dam's Van Dam's gonna win in the death match between him and Seagal. So if you take nothing else from this interview, there, there you go. <laughs> right. Uh, on. No, I mean the reason I'm so passionate. One of one of the many reasons I'm so passionate about it. Uh, for instance, I was published on the Jiu Jitsu Times writing an article about five reasons why uh, Jiu Jitsu is so useful for entrepreneurs. Um, for you know dealing with your ego. I mean, you know it, it's easy to. You know, if you made some cash, if you made had a degree, a modicum of success, then you know it's easy to get your head a little inflated. Um, yeah. But then when you go to a place regularly where anybody can kick your ass and they'll hold you down, they'll choke you out, and their sweat will drip into your face, and they'll they'll tap you out five, six times in a row, it's like, okay, well, maybe I'm not so cool. 
Yeah. No, well, that's, and I mean, honestly, that's kind of, that's like, not just real estate investing, that's life in general. You know, one minute you think that you have everything <laughs> figured out and then out of, out of, you know, out of nowhere, some old 70 year old guy just drops you to the mat and you have to tap out. It's, yeah. it's out of your control. So it's, it's, you know, I think that's something that could translate not just to real estate, but in life in general, you know, you always got, you, you know, you always got to pre be prepared, expect the unexpected and, you know, Sometimes things are going to be out of our control, but the more that we le learn and the more that we prepare, you know, the better, hopefully we'll be able to handle those surprises when they do come up. So, um, yeah, so this has been, this has been great. I wanted to just ask you one or two more questions just to, just before we wrap up here um, and bringing it back to real estate and for all the people out there listening that may have, you know, maybe have not done their first investment yet. Now that you guys, you and your wife, the dynamic duo are in your duplex, and you are, you know, you guys are out there doing it. What would you tell people that haven't done it yet, maybe are a little reluctant? Um, do you have any advice for them that, you know, now that, you know, now that you've got one under your belt that might be beneficial to those who haven't started yet? It's far more accessible than you think. You know, there's a lot of us who look at it and, you know, even when I had a, uh, as a young man, a decent pile of cash sitting ready to go, I was still nervous and thought I was like outside my realms for richer people. But I mean, especially with an opportunity like uh, house hacking, I mean, it's more accessible than it's ever been. Get a decent credit score, get a little bit of money built up. I mean, it's not unreasonable. It's not inaccessible. Anybody can start down that path. Yeah. I mean, obviously you got to strike the balance between educating and taking action because too many people fall into the information paralysis. Yeah. They're, they're studying real estate for 30 years while they're working the job that they hate. Yeah. Um, so it's important to study, but don't lose yourself in the study. Like balance it with consistent action. Don't be frightened. You can do it. It's more accessible than ever. Work on your credit score. Um, be aware of origination. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that's, that's so true. That's such good stuff there. I mean, the whole analysis paralysis, it, it's true, you know, and a lot of it I think has to do with just fear of the unknown. Yeah. Uh, and what, what I always say, I put a lot of emphasis on people, um, you know, meeting with other people, whether it's through the invest nest or your local real estate meetup, you know, having somebody, whether they're a mentor or not, but somebody that's already doing it or has done it to talk to, you know, and I, I found personally when I got started in real estate investing, just having, I have several good friends that do real estate investing. I, I wouldn't be here without them um, because just some of the things I was uncertain about hearing them tell me, you know, oh, that's not a big deal, or I wouldn't worry about this. It just kind of gives you a little bit more confidence, you know, and I think that's a big challenge for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's really good stuff, Joe. Uh, you know, I really appreciate you joining me. It sounds like you guys are very busy. Um, can, can, is there anything that you have going on that you want to tell everybody out there about? Any, any, is there a place people can find you? Anything that you would like to promote? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, I have two books published, well, three books published currently. One of them is a free online book, uh, Sharpening the Sword, Enhancing Your Entrepreneurial Arsenal is the first book I published that took a look at, condensed a lot of the material I'd gathered throughout my 20s from door-to-door -door sales, generating leads online, social media, building a team, just a lot of stuff that I found myself repeating when giving other people advice, put it into a book available on Amazon, Sharpening the Sword. Uh, my most recent book is called Stronger, uh, it's about uh, for families looking to train martial arts together, uh, how to how to do it in certain um, uh, you know sequences, specific moves, games to play to make it fun, how to have conversations with your children about self defense and appropriate levels of force. Um, so stronger is my most recent book by Joseph Bryant, also available on Amazon. Uh, I do a you have a YouTube channel, Sharpening the Sword, where I cover the content from my books. So if you don't want to buy the books, you can yeah. just listen to my YouTube channel and still basically get the gist of it. I cover each chapter on there. Plus I, I discuss like writing tips and, um, you know, different things that have worked for me in that regard. Uh, I am a freelance writer, so you can also, if you're in need of content generation, you can give me a shout to those channels as well. You can find me and I'm, as Joseph Bryant or Sharpening the Sword on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter. Uh, we have a, cleaning business in the Azle, Texas area. So if you have yourself any investments, any properties in the area that you need a reliable cleaning crew, we got you covered right here as well on that side. Awesome, is there a website they can, they can find you? Uh, Rise and Clean is the cleaning crew. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, probably the best way to find us. Got a lot of reviews on there. Uh, Rise and Clean 
Awesome. And uh, Azel, Texas is our cleaning company. Awesome. Awesome. I could go on with you all day, Joe. It sounds like, <laughs> you know, your previous experiences in contracting and, and, and you know, just in the businesses you've, you've started and ran, uh, you know, how that translates into real estate investing. I, I could go on and on with you all day, but we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, you guys can, if you want to learn or hear anything more that Joe has to say, you can find him on his YouTube channel at Sharpening the Sword, as well as Facebook at Sharpening the Sword. Is that correct, Joe? Yes, sir. All right. Well, sounds good. I really appreciate you joining me um, and everybody out there listening. Thanks for listening this week. Uh, I want to remind everybody that the Invest Nest is live, so you can go out right now and create your free profile and start networking with other members and check out the articles and blogs we have posted. And if you have any experiences or investments or stories that you would like to share, you can start your own blog and then share directly from the Invest Nest website to your social media channels, whether that be Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. So get out there, check out the website. Um, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Invest Nest. And one other thing I haven't put probably enough emphasis on is that we do have a Facebook group uh, page. So you can find that at Facebook slash groups slash the Invest Nest. Um, so join us there as well. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our, our uh, podcast and YouTube channel. And I want to thank you guys all for listening to me today. This is the official first Invest guest we've had since the launch of theinvestnest.com. Uh, so it's been a very exciting show. Uh, I'm, it's been an absolute pleasure, Joe. Thanks, everybody out there for listening. This is Travis Murphy, your host of the Invest Nest Real Estate Investing Show. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us on the Invest Nest Real Estate Investing Show. Be sure to join the investnest.com and start learning and earning today.